If you're looking to make a beautiful professional website for your business, a fundraiser, community events, a wedding, a personal portfolio, or even just a high school project, then Wix is a really powerful option for that. It allows you to make beautiful, customizable websites with hardly any effort at all. And so in this video, I'm going to show you step by step everything you need to know how to go from an absolute beginner to having a full-blown professional website by the end of this video. I'll show you all of the tools you need and probably some more extra tools that you might not even need, but they're good to have anyway. So with that being said, guys, there's a lot to cover in this video. I'll put timestamps down below. So if you guys are going through this video and you get stuck at some point, you can either play it back slower or you can check out the timestamps and skip around to other important parts that you need as you're building your website. So with that being said, guys, let's jump into this video and get started making a professional website. All right, so here we are over on my desktop, and the first thing you want to do is open up your internet browser and copy the link from the top of the description of this video and paste it over in your browser, or you can just go and type in santrellmedia.com slash Wix. That way we can make sure that we all start from the same page. So santrellmedia.com slash Wix, hit enter. That'll redirect you to this page right here. And don't be alarmed if Wix tends to change the image every now and then. It might not be this little mountain picture here. But the point is that in the middle, you should see a start now button. So we're going to click on that and that'll bring us over to the login page. Now, assuming you don't already have an account, what we want to do is actually sign up for a new one. So I'm just going to click sign up. You can sign up with Facebook or with Google if you want, uh, but I'm just going to make my own email and password uh, sign up right now to log in. Definitely remember these. You will need them every time you sign in uh, to work on your website. So I'm just going to type in tutorials at santrellmedia.com. Uh, we're going to create a password and then continue on to the next screen. So just click sign up. And once we go to the next screen, this is where we are really going to start. It's going to ask us a lot of questions. It's going to ask us about what kind of website we're trying to make. So just say get started for this one. Uh, and then it's going to ask like how, how big our business is, stuff like that. So the first one, uh, what do you want to create a website for? It doesn't really matter which one you choose. I'm going to go with myself just because uh, obviously I'm making this just for a personal portfolio or whatever it might be. But again, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Similarly, if you've never created a website before, obviously say it's your first time, but it, it's just going to really control what kind of feedback it's giving you. And then this is really where it starts to matter a little bit. But again, we can change all this later on. So you want to type in essentially what type of website you're trying to make. Uh, and I recommend being as specific as possible. So if you are making, um, I'm going to make a coffee shop in this video. And if you type coffee shop, you'll see that we have tons and tons, tons of different ones, a coffee fan club, coffee food truck, a coffee brewing course, like tons of options. And, and similarly, if you have like a food truck, I would recommend not just saying restaurant, uh, but really looking for uh, something as specific as possible because it will help you find the right template in a second. Now, when we get to this page, this is where a lot of people tend to kind of derail. A lot of people end up using the Wix ADI creator. That is not what I recommend. It is faster and easier to make your website at first, but in the long run, you lose a lot of the customization that, that you have when you actually go and choose your own template. So I'm not going to use the ADI creator. Instead, we're gonna click over here on the right side where it says choose a template, uh, just because like I said, you're gonna get a lot more uh, freedom, a lot more customization as you're definitely going to see throughout this video. So make sure you click on choose a template. And then here is what I was saying a minute ago where it doesn't matter if you say coffee truck, coffee shop, whatever, uh, it's just gonna help you find a template right here. So these are all ones that are supposed to be relevant to a coffee shop, like a shave shop, it seems like it might not be relevant. Uh, but if you really think about it, it's probably going to have very similar pages. Uh, same thing like an about us page and everything like that is going to be pretty similar. But of course, like I said, if you change your mind and you don't like the coffee shop ones, you could search on the top right or you can go down and search by category as well. So you could go and check out like a business one, maybe a real estate one, whatever you're looking for. And honestly, any one of these could be completely customized to anything you want. It just helps a lot if you choose something that's relevant to uh, what you're looking for. So cafe and bakery is similar but none of them are really look the way I want them to. So if we just go back to the coffee shop ones, uh, I'll type in coffee shop on the top right there, and that'll bring us down here. So we can see that out of all of these, there are tons and tons of different options. There's like 20 something pages of these, as you'll see uh, when I get down to the bottom, but you can look at each individual one. And the whole point is you really wanna be looking at like the font, the layout of it. Don't worry about the pictures as much because you can customize all of those later on. Uh, but like the color scheme is going to be important. And all of this is really just going to save you a lot of work. As you see on the top right, you could also go from a blank template, uh, but I'm going to try to find a good one. So let's go down, uh, see which other ones we have right here. So. We have local artisan coffee, looks all right. Uh, again, that barbershop. And then let's go, let's go to the next page and see what else we have. 
And it looks like this one, I, I like this one right here. This catches my eye. Uh, so that's important. I might want to, I don't see anything else on this page. Let's go to this one. So we can click on view for any one of these. And when you go to view, you can either edit right now or you can go to a full demo. The full demo gives you kind of an interactive, like the full website experience. So you have that nice parallax image on the top. I like that. As we go down, you have, I, I really like this section, kind of like an hour story, I think is what I would do with that. I, I like this video. Uh, and then going down, honestly, this all looks really nice. I like this layout a lot. So when you find one that you really do like, uh, you can just go up to the top right, click on edit this site, and that'll bring us over to the editor. This is where everything really starts to happen. And like I said before, guys, it doesn't matter which template you choose. Uh, it will make it easier if you choose a good one. So we're going to close out of this right here. And now this is the layout. This is everything we're going to be doing for the majority of this video. But to give you guys an idea of what we're dealing with here in the middle, this is your website. This is essentially your live website, what it's going to look like as you scroll around it. The only thing you can't do is click on buttons. It's not going to interact in that way uh, because it is in the editing mode uh, unless you go over to publish and preview that. But when you're looking at this, we can move things around. We can adjust things and do all kinds of stuff like that. Now, uh, that's everything in the middle. Now, the top and the left side are really how we are able to edit everything. So starting off with the very top uh, on the left side, uh, we have our, our drop down menu for the pages. And so this is going to be like right now we have a menu ordering online and contacting us. Those are like the three pages that it shows right there. So if we go up to uh, the top, well, first of all, that's going to show up in the header. That's your navigation bar. But if you go to the pages on the top, you can switch between them because as you can see, like I said, it's not actually an interactive website in the editor. So if you want to switch pages, you have to do this from the top here. So if we just want to switch back to the home page and we can start editing this in a second, but as we go over to the right, you'll see that we do have the switch to mobile option. This is the next really important thing. And I really can't stress this enough. Uh, so first let's click skip this. We don't need that. Uh, but this is going to be really important. So a ton of your vi visitors, especially if you're like a restaurant or a coffee shop, are going to be visiting on mobile. For me, for my websites, I've seen somewhere around 50 to 60% of people are actually visiting from a phone or a tablet. So you want to make sure throughout this uh, the creation process, you want to make your website on the desktop mode and then come over here and view it and manage it and make sure everything's looking good on the mobile editor. So you wanna make sure that like the text is not cut off, images don't look weird, uh, and it's just going to be a, a good website. In general, Wix does a good job of translating that, um, but then when we go over across the top bar, we do also have, uh, when you go to site, you can go to your site history. This is great if you're trying to roll something back. If you screwed something up and you wanna undo it, you can do that right there. Uh, then we go over to settings. You have some really important things here, some really big stuff for your website in general. So like connecting a domain, uh, getting a mailbox. So if you want a Gmail that's not, or like really any email that's going to be like at your domain, you can do that. You can upgrade that. And we'll talk, we'll talk on all these later on in the video. Going down here, we have SEO. Again, I'll talk about this later on in the video as well. Then we have our icon for your browser. This is something that's really important. I actually want to do this right now before we continue, uh, before we get down to the bottom things. But I mean, just to kind of summarize them, you have like your business info down here, social sharing, stuff like that. But let's go back and actually add the icon right now. I think it's going to make us actually publish our site first or save the website. But to clarify what I'm talking about, if you look on the top right here, you can see where it says like the Wix logo right there. That's going to be essentially what we're trying to add an icon on the browser so that people know uh, what website they're on. Now, we're going to have to choose a domain. This is just temporary for now with the free domain. Eventually, we will be upgrading this. So starting off right here, we want to just start maybe Santral Coffee Shop is what I'm going to call this just to name the website really. Uh, and that's going to give it a place to save it and publish it for now until we upgrade this and, and get our own domain. Now, looking at this, we're going to add, let's go back up here and add our icon. Uh, and it's going to bring us into a little editor right here where we can upload our own image. Uh, so you'll see as we scroll down, uh, upload image. So we're going to click upload image and it's going to bring us into our upload media file so we can upload our own media, upload from computer. And you know, just to save time for the rest of this video, I'm going to upload all the images I have for this website and then I'll select just one in a second. But uploading all of these at once does make it a lot easier. It puts them all in kind of like a media bin on Wix that you can upload files and images and videos and everything all in one place. Uh, so that's generally what I recommend doing. And we'll be able to drag these onto the website later on. But starting off, this is the logo I want to use for the icon. Uh, if I just say choose file, it should scale it down relatively well. Uh, so it looks like it might be a little bit weird there, but it, I think it's going to show up right when we're on the browser. So uh, we are just going to save this and we're going to click on the X to go back to the editor. 
And then going across the top, we also have the save button up there. Make sure you always hit save. It should auto save, but I recommend clicking save on your own just in case like your, your computer dies or something. You don't wanna lose any work, especially if you just did something kind of significant. So continuing across the top, we have tools. Uh, the tools, the first one is the toolbar, which is kind of that thing on the right side that honestly, I don't really use this that often. Uh, so I generally like to just kind of hide that whenever I need it or if you did accidentally hide it, you can always just find it again, going up to tools, clicking on toolbar, and it'll show up. Same thing with layers. I don't really use layers much, so I like to hide that. Rulers is something I do like to use, but you can see like the grid lines here uh, are going to be kind of guiding you with your website. If you don't like those, very easy to hide. Uh, but snapping the objects using grid lines and using rulers really helps to make your website look more symmetric. So on the on like the right side there, you see all these numbers. Those are the pixels counting down from or counting up from the top. Uh, so if you want to space something out evenly, you can start at like 100 pixels, maybe go at something else at 300 pixels, something else at 500 pixels. Uh, and that way you have these lines going horizontally that you can then drag and snap things to. So you can drag this till we get to exactly 500 or honestly just close enough. Uh, so like 300, somewhere around there. And then we can click and drag the text until you see the magenta line shows up. So it shows you that it's centered vertically and uh, centered horizontally with the line that we're looking for. And we can easily just align each item uh, with that so that they're evenly spaced. It's a great way to, again, make your website look a little bit more balanced, a little bit more evenly spaced, uh, but it's something that you don't need necessarily for everything. So if you wanna get rid of these, you just go head on over to the right and click on them and then hit the delete button. Also, there's a little trash can that shows up. You might see that, you can click on that as well, uh, but I'm just going to click on this and delete it. And then we could do the same thing on the top as well. If you wanna add like a line for uh, to make thirds or something on your website, very easy to add those. There should by default kind of be like a center line already. So I don't usually add those. Most of my stuff is either centered or left or right justified. Continuing across the top, dev mode, don't worry about that. Help, uh, we really don't need to worry about that much right now either. And then upgrade, which we will do later on in the video. Now, can, that's pretty much everything on the top I wanna talk about. The other thing uh, besides the top is really going to be on the left side. So the left side is really where everything starts to happen when we're customizing this website. The first thing is kind of your site menu. Yes, we have that on the top to switch pages, but you can do a lot more here. You can not just switch pages, but you can actually customize them. You can add pages, you can rename pages, reorder them, do all kinds of different stuff. And so taking a look at this, this is really the first big thing, the first big decision you wanna make with your website, just to make sure that all of your pages are, are there and you have them and you're ready to edit each individual one. So right now we have four pages. Let's say I really don't care that much about a contact us page. I could just go and delete that page by clicking on the three dots and then saying delete. Similarly, we could add a page as you just click on the blue button on the bottom. And maybe this is a, let's say this is like an about us page. And so if you click on the three dots, you can go to settings. Uh, of course you could rename it, you could duplicate it, hide it, whatever. Uh, but what you really wanna do here, I'm gonna get into these settings later on in the video, but you just wanna make sure that you have the right name for it. It's called about us. Uh, and you're gonna see, it's gonna show up on the top of your navigation. You can kinda see it in the background right there. When I hide this window, you will see it, but you can hide it if you don't want it in your menu. Uh, so this would be maybe like a privacy policy or something like that is something that I generally don't wanna show in the top menu. You just wanna link it somewhere else on your website. So you want that page, but you don't want it linked on your menu. Now going across, you have your layouts. Uh, if you don't wanna have your header on the top, uh, so this would be maybe if you have like a big video player or something, that'd be kind of nice. Uh, but for most pages, I generally keep the header and the footer there. It just helps people to navigate around the website just like a little bit more easily. Now we also have some other options here. We can add a link to the to the navigation bar as well. So this doesn't even have to be on our website. If we add a link, it could be uh, to a web address, so eBay or an Etsy store that you might have. You could also link to an email, a phone number. You could have an anchor. There's a lot of different things you can do here. We're just gonna add a phone number in the top, uh, being that this is a coffee shop. Maybe it's easier if we have a lot of mobile visitors that they wanna just go and call us by tapping on this on the top. So we're gonna say done. It adds it to the top uh, and it knows that it's a phone number. So we can just, it's gonna be great that it's there. But the other thing is that not only can you change what is on the menu, but you can also change where that actually is on your navigation bar. So if we want the call us thing to be on the bottom, you just click on it and drag it up or down. So you'll see that we can drag about us down. And the other cool thing is that we wanna make a sub page. So online ordering, if we want that to be like when they hover over menu, you can click it and drag it to the right. So that'll make it a sub page. I'll show you guys what this actually looks like. So if we just close out of this, we can go to save it and then go to preview. And so we're just gonna, it's gonna open uh, a new preview and we, and we go preview. And now we can actually, so yeah, close out that. A lot of pop-ups 
Anyway, so here you'll see that when you go to home, uh, we can hover over menu and that's going to show us online ordering, the about us, and then call us is going to actually open up. Uh, it looks like that right there. Uh, being on a desktop, that's probably not the best thing to have. But if you have a lot of mobile visitors, it's definitely a great thing to have where it would open up the phone app and they would just be able to call you from there. Now, obviously, like I said, you could link to so many other things on your page. Uh, it could be like different pages. It could be different links. It could be an anchor on your page. And I'll show you anchors later on in the video. Uh, but let's go back to uh, back to editor. Click on the green button right there and bring us right back to the editor. And then let's continue down here. So that's pretty much everything I want to show you with the site menu, how to rearrange it, how to add links, how to add stuff like that, adding more pages, obviously. Uh, if you want to delete a page, you would just click on the three dots and go down to delete it. Uh, you could also make it like your home page. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but that, that's what, what that's what I want to show you right there. Now, if we go to settings by clicking on the three dots, uh, we have SEO options, we have social options, um, and obviously we can duplicate this if we're trying to make two of the same page. It, I find it's a great way to kind of use one page as a template, so you don't have to, you know, it saves you a little bit of work. You don't have to remake an entire page. Um, it's just something that I kind of like to do. Similarly, you can hide it if it's an old page that you don't want to use anymore. Uh, and you don't want to delete it because you think, you know what, maybe you might want to use it again for another maybe seasonal sale. You could just hide that. Now, if we go into settings here, uh, we actually have permissions. So if you want this to be shown to everyone, that's most of your website, uh, password holders, uh, and then members only. Members only is a great way to kind of build an email list and make like an exclusive page. So people will have to make a membership with you. Usually they're free. Uh, and so they could just sign up. They'll have an email and a password to get onto that specific page. And then maybe it's just exclusive content you have just for them. We also have uh, SEO, so search engine optimization. I'll get more into SEO later on in the video. They have their SEO whiz. It kind of walks you through it. It makes it really easy to do, honestly. Uh, and so I'll show you where to find that later on. But here uh, we have how it's going to show up in Google. You want to do this with every single page. You want to make sure you have the right URL slug, which means at the end of your URL. So it'll be like centralmedia.com slash home would redirect you to this page. Uh, and so that would just be what your URL slug is. Then we can also change the name of it. Your homepage should not say home like this. That doesn't look good. We want to call this something a little bit more enticing. So Santrell Coffee Shop. Uh, and obviously we do want spaces. We want it to look like exactly how it's going to show up on Google. So put a little dash there and say best coffee in North North, North Philly. How about that? Uh, so that way it's like they know what it is. Uh, they know where you are and they know that maybe you're proud of being a local coffee shop. And then down here, we can actually add some some text below that your little they call it a meta description. It's really just a short little uh, maybe 150 character description uh, that's going to be like what your what what that what that page is actually about. Uh, so people are going to see this when they're when they're on Google and you can see right up there. Um, we want to make this like, like I said, about 150 characters, you'll see what's cut off. Um, and that's that's really what you want to do with that. So if we head back, uh, actually, let's go back. There's a couple other things I wanted to show you here. Uh, besides SEO. I mean, that's everything for SEO. Social share. This is like if you share it on, on Facebook or something. What kind of image do you want to show up on Facebook? Um, maybe it would show up on some other social shares as well. I think Facebook is like the main one. And so that's what it's going to look like. Again, you want to have a good uh, title and description. And then advanced SEO. I mean, you guys really don't have to worry about this right now. The SEO is covers most of what you need to know uh, for basic stuff. We have Page transitions as well. Page transitions can give you like, you know, obviously it's pretty self-explanatory when you go from one page to maybe your about us page. Is it going to like crossfade or do something? I usually like to leave nothing on there, but sometimes, you know, a little fade is not is not a problem. Now, going down to the next thing, we have the page background and the page background is going to be obviously specific for each individual page. This one right here, we have those little chocolate truffle things. Um, they look really good on the top. And, and, and the benefit of using this instead of just a picture uh, for the background of the strip is that the background of the page goes all the way up behind the header as well. So for the top section or the top strip, I really do like that. It looks pretty good. You can make it a video. You can make it an image. You can make it a color. Uh, I think videos, they look cool, but sometimes they make it a little bit like it's a little bit slower with slower internet access. Sometimes uh, your website doesn't give you a good experience. Uh, so I usually just stick with an image. Now, uh, this image, unfortunately, is pretty small. I think this might be low resolution. But you see, we have some options here. So parallax means that as you scroll, the picture kind of stays uh, the same in the background. Uh, we can also go and change this from uh, tile to fill. Uh, you see, obviously, like I said, kind of a low resolution. 
but you can move it around as well. So where do you want this image located? You can move it to the left or the right. Um, this one being not a good image, I think I, I should probably just change this image, honestly. So uh, we can see that right there. It looks good, but again, just low resolution. So let's go back. Let's change. Let's pick a different image. Hopefully this one's a slight, yeah, that's way better quality. There we go. That's what I wanted. Uh, and so if we go to settings for this one, again, you can add like the parallax, you can make it a fill, uh, you can read, you know, change where it's, where it's located. So moving the coffee cup to the right a little bit, uh, I think might be beneficial so it doesn't get in the way of the text. And we can also go into some other settings here. Uh, so this is actually allowing you to adjust the photo itself. And what I, again, another thing I really like about Wix is that they have so many different settings that you can customize anything on your whole website. So if we just like maybe drop the contrast a little bit, uh, maybe the brightness could be a little bit darker, maybe a little bit less saturated, uh, maybe a little more saturated, and we could warm it up a little bit, increase the temperature. So you see on the left side, we can also enhance this. We can go to uh, crop and resize, put filters on it, like a lot of different things to really customize every picture on your website. So from here, I think that's pretty much what I want to do with the background uh, image for the for the whole page right here. Everything else is not really going to use this background. I'll put a background on the individual strips. But going down on the left side, the next thing is actually all of the items we can add to this page. So we can add text, we can add headings, um, obviously images and buttons. Uh, those are all really standard to see on a lot of websites. But Wix actually has a lot more than just that as well. So each individual one, we have like tons of different styles of buttons. We have a gallery, we have decorative things like shapes and lines. Uh, we can even have some interactive stuff. So if you want to have like a little slideshow uh, or like a subscribe thing so, so people can sign up for your email list, like they really make it pretty easy to just click and drag any one of these onto your site. So I'm going to get into a lot of these later on, probably like the most of the rest of this video will be spent customizing the site. But let's head over here and actually start looking at what this site is looking like. So here we have our text kind of floating around as you scroll. Uh, it looks like we have a section here that uh, I, I really I want to use this for like an about us section. Uh, so top is going to be like uh, whatever the title is, then we'll have an about us section and you can customize all of this really well. Also, uh, then we have this nice little video. It'd be nice to change that because it's a coffee shop. Uh, going down, you'll see that we do, I've been talking about strips a lot. So you see that like, uh, this is all one strip right here. Uh, this is all another strip. You can see that it's kind of a strip layout. The easiest way to see this is if we click on zoom out and reorder, it highlights them in a blue box. Uh, and so you can rearrange these and it's kind of like the layout that you'll, you'll notice that most websites are kind of laid out in a very similar way here. So in any, in any strip you want, you can actually resize it by clicking and dragging this like really thick blue bar up and down. Uh, and then when you hover over them, you can also edit that, uh, meaning like you could move it up and down. We can duplicate different sections or strips. Um, sometimes in this video, just so you guys know, I might say strip or I might say section. Uh, it, it's really common to see this in, in either term on a lot of other website builders, but Wix does call them strips. So I'm going to do my best to say strips in this video. Uh, we can also, like I said, duplicate the section if you just want to use it kind of as a template uh, to make another one. Uh, we can try to expand this one. It looks like that image is, is not large enough to expand though. And we can, like I said, move them up and down uh, using the right arrow over on the right side there. So, or the up arrow on the right side. So we're going to close out of this right now. Uh, and so now we have our strips kind of laid out in a more logical way. Uh, the other thing, I, I guess I didn't point out the undo and the redo button. These are unbelievably important when you're doing something, if you screw something up and you want to just quickly undo it, uh, the undo button on the top is really, really nice. So drag it over, just click undo and everything's back to where it was. So with that being said, let's go down and start editing this section first. Uh, I'll get back up to the top section in a second, but uh, you see the guidelines on the left side, these little dotted lines, these act as your guidelines to kind of suggest, like you have to keep in mind that not everybody visiting your website will be using the same computer. They're going to be using smaller computers, bigger ones. Uh, maybe they're in like not a full screen mode on their on their browser. And so you want to make sure that if your image is like way over here, it's out of those dotted lines, which means that it's not guaranteed that people are going to see her face. There's some situation where somebody will visit your website and her face will not be shown. So I recommend keeping pretty much everything inside the lines. If you have a little bit on the outside of those dotted lines, like some part of the picture that doesn't really matter, uh, then that's not a problem. But it gives you like enough working space in the middle that it looks good on every computer. Uh, but also you never have anything cut off on smaller screens. So that's that's like the first thing to keep in mind there. Now, the second thing is actually 
we can customize like this image right here. We can move it around, click and drag it, and you see these magenta lines pop up. That's what I talked about where you're snapping it to like the center right here. So that's snapping it to the center of this strip. Uh, and so we can make sure that everything's lined up properly like that. Now over here, we have our text. You can easily customize that as well. If you double click on it, you can edit the text uh, on the right side. You can change like the size, the font, uh, the style of it. You can also just type anything you want and actually edit what the text says. It's all really easy to do. We can also change our background and I'll talk about that in a second, but let's start off uh, with this right here. So we can actually change um, our, our title. So we can actually go and add an animation to that if you want. Uh, so animations, again, would be besides just the, the page transition, you can also have animations for individual items. If you want it to kind of fade in when somebody scrolls down, it could be a cool look. It could also be a little bit annoying. So definitely be careful when you're doing this and make sure uh, you do it, you know, gener not too generously, uh, but you want to make sure that you're doing it with some kind of reservation. So for this, I'm going to say our story. And let's just say we are uh, a local coffee shop, local coffee shop born in North Philly. There we go. So I think that's a pretty good title right there. And then down here, we can have our story. I'm just going to paste some more dummy text. Uh, don't know why that scrolled down right there. Uh, I'm going to paste, yeah, probably like a nice little paragraph there. This is gonna, here I'm just using dummy text, obviously. Uh, but we can also change, you know, if you click on it, you can go to get text ideas. It's something relatively new on Wix. It's not something I use much. I, I generally kind of know what the website, what I want it to look like. I kind of have a vision in my head. Uh, but, you know, text ideas, whatever. So I'm going to go to edit the text. This is an H2, meaning heading two, which makes sense because at the top we have our primary heading. The secondary heading is something that you want to make sure that Google knows uh, or whatever search engine you're using uh, knows that this is a secondary heading, which means that it's going to be like a title of this section. This section is all about our story. And of course, you can change how it looks, though. So you can change the color of it. You can change like a highlight. You can add a link if you want. Uh, and so I'll talk more about links later on in the video, especially with anchors. I think that's really what we want to do here. Um, so we can link it to an anchor. But for now, I'm not going to put a link on here. Now, on the right side, we also have a couple other things we can do with the text. So if we go down to effects, you have some really weird things. So you can put a shadow on them. Uh, you can put like a glow. You can have like a weird shadow that's separated below it. This weird, like really separated shadow. Like, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of different things uh, that you can do here. So check them out. Sometimes it's cool to put a creative thing on there. I think for this, I kind of like the simple, like elegant, minimal look right there. But you can also go down and, and like I said, Wix has a ton of customization. You can change the character spacing, which means like how wide the text is actually going to look or how much space there is between each letter. So if we increase this to kind of match a, a slightly larger uh, range, we can go to maybe like 0.25 there. And similarly, you can customize the line spacing above and below. Doesn't really, that's not really important right here. And we can go to SEO and accessibility. This is H2, which means that you want Google to, again, like I said before, you want any search engine to identify this and know that that is a heading, uh, which means that everything below that is going to be related to whatever that heading is. Now, we can also do the same thing, edit anything else in here. Uh, we can change the strip background. And if you just click anywhere on this blank white space in the background, Right now, it's not the same thing as a page background. It's a white one. Uh, but you can go and change like the strip layout, first of all. You can make it left aligned, center aligned. Uh, center is probably what I'm going to do for this one. And you can change the background as well uh, to either a color or an image or, again, a video. I think that uh, because it's a coffee shop, like a nice dark brown would look pretty good. Uh, honestly, this one, I, I kind of like that color right there. It's almost like a... It's almost like a greenish brown. It's kind of hard to tell based on the screen you're using, but uh, we want to edit the text now. So the text, it should probably be a little bit brighter than this. So if we go down to color, we can make, uh, maybe this one probably should be white actually. Let's make the heading white. And then everything below this, let's make it like a light brown, just so it kind of doesn't stand out quite as much as the heading, but it stands out a little bit more than it currently does. So let's bring it up just one notch right there to a slightly lighter grayish brown. Uh, then we same thing with this one, we can edit the text. Uh, go down there and make this one slightly lighter. I guess it is kind of, it looks like a grayish brown. It's hard to say what that is. But regardless, I think that looks a lot better. Now, actually, I like this even better than the white background. I think the picture really pops now. Uh, and I really like how this is starting to look. So that's this section right here. As we go down, this one is a video. It's not going to play the video right now. But if you were on the website, if you went to preview, uh, you would be able to see that. So 
Now, say we wanna add a section below this that's not that video, you can zoom out and you can either duplicate this section to have a second one below that, or if you're looking for a section that's going to be a little bit different, you can go over to the left side, click on add, and we're looking for a strip, uh, there it is, strip. So we want to add a new strip. And like I said before, you have a lot of different strips you could add. It could be about maybe like our team, maybe we wanna add that. Uh, and so there's a bunch of different our team ones, there's some classic ones, testimonials. Uh, let's go and add our team. So if you click and drag this over, uh, try to aim for the, the best spot you can. We can rearrange this in a second if we want. Uh, and sometimes it, it uh, where did that go? It does take a second until it pops up. Um, so we'll just give this a second. Um, and there it is, finally, it just popped up. I don't know why it takes that long for that to show up, uh, but it did, and so now it's all the way at the top, which is not where I want it to be. So we can zoom out and reorder, and we can move this section down. Uh, so maybe like right there is good, maybe a little bit lower. Um, and so you can kind of choose where things are actually going. And again, you can resize them, make them larger or smaller. Um, so that I think for right now is really pretty much what we're looking for. So editing these sections, this one right here is a video. And if you're wondering why the video is the full width, is because the video is actually the background of this strip. So there's actually nothing in the strip and you can hit play and you'll see that there is that really cool video not relevant to what we're doing. So we'll see if there's like a coffee one and oh, there we go. It looks like this is a workspace one. So we're going to change the background to uh, this kind of guy or woman drinking coffee, working on their laptop. And we do have some settings here. So you can add what's called an overlay pattern, which is kind of hard to see right here, but it's going to kind of give you a little more separation for uh, your, your text on top. So if you put a little grain on there or some kind of a little hatch pattern, it looks kind of cool and it also makes your text a lot more visible. So we can change it from darker to lighter. We can reposition this left and right, up and down. This video is not large enough to go left and right. So really just up and down is all we have. And we could add an overlay color as well. So overlay color could look really cool. Um, a brownish one is not going to be that cool. You can change the opacity though. Uh, again, just to make your text a little bit easier to read, make the video like a more of a background video if you wanna put something on top. Obviously this would not be important if you were just playing uh, just a random video there. But maybe right here I wanna say, I wanna add some text uh, and I wanna say like start your day off right or something like that. So if we go to add and we go to the top two text, uh, this is probably going to be another H2, another heading two, and just click and drag that over to uh, wherever you think it should go. Um, and that is actually the right section. It just didn't show the video right there. And so uh, we want to like resize this, make it a little bigger. I'm going to change the font. I'm going to change uh, like the size of it. First, let's say start your day off right. There we go. So we know uh, what size we're actually dealing with here. Uh, so we can narrow that down two lines. That's exactly what I'm looking for there. So let's make it bolder. Let's make this white. Uh, and yeah, I think white looks good. And then we can also change the size of this to make it a little bit bigger. And again, we're gonna have to resize this block here so we can click and drag that to, yeah, like right there. And let's change the font. Now, I don't recommend choosing too many different fonts on your website. It can slow down your load speed, which means that uh, you don't have as good of a user experience, which also is something that Google's using when they're choosing the ranking of your website. So if you have too many fonts, that correlates to lower rankings in Google in general. It's not like the biggest factor, but it's something that usually best practice is to use like maybe two different fonts on your website. If I'm using three, it's really not going to be a big deal. But there uh, is pretty much what I was looking for. We can extend this down a little bit for a larger, for the video to be slightly larger. Uh, and you get the idea right there. We can go to preview and that video should automatically start playing when you scroll down there. So at the top, uh, we still didn't change that text. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that in a second. Same thing with this button. Our story, looking good. Definitely looks a little greener now that I'm looking at it. And then we have this video down here, um, which is just playing in the background. So it honestly makes your website look pretty cool. Definitely separates it from like the, the 90s websites that are out there, the early 2000s websites. Uh, it's looking a little bit more advanced now, a little bit more modern. So going back to the editor, I think you guys are really starting to get the idea of how you can edit your website. Uh, with Wix, it's really, everything is really easy to do. Uh, but let's go to the top and actually start changing this. So uh, we, I wanna add one title, let's get rid of this. So if you just click on it, click delete, uh, delete that, delete, uh, yeah, delete the button, delete the line, delete the other text, uh, and we're stuck with just this one thing. So this probably won't look that great, but if I wanna, I wanna say Santral Coffee, uh, and again, let's use the same font, I think it was uh, semi-bold, there we go. So we can change that, make it a little bigger, uh, make it the full width of the top here. So let's make this, move it up to the left and extend it. There we go, Santral Coffee, 
and we can put that right there. So I think that looks a little better. It definitely looks decent. Maybe this is a situation where it's not separated from the background that well. So maybe something like a shadow, like a subtle, uh, a subtle little shadow like that might give you a little bit of extra separation without being too gaudy or noticeable. So I think that that did a decent job there. And then we can add maybe like a button below that. So again, right here, you see so many different button options. Uh, you have some that are like animated that do kind of cool stuff. And then you have the classic themed ones on the top that are just going to match the colors already. Obviously, you can customize like any one of these to do whatever you want, be whatever color, do whatever you want. Uh, but sometimes it's easier just to choose one that has a cool animation if that's what you're looking for. I generally, I'm just, I'm probably just going to use one of these up here, probably like this one actually. Uh, or maybe even just like a brown one. Let's go ahead and use a brown one. Click and drag that uh, and put that button. Eh, I really don't like the button here, but regardless, we're, we're just going to leave a button up here anyway, just so I can show you guys like how we're going to add the button. Now, with a button, uh, you have some options. So when you click on that, you can change the text and the icon. So the text, uh, we could say um, maybe like order uh, more order now. We could say that. And we have an icon arrow is just fine and we can click on the little chain icon on the top uh, to add a link and so this link I think we can link to I think we had a page that was for this so if we go down to page uh, there should be or you can also link to like an anchor if you want but I think page uh, we could put it in a new window and it should be order on order online ordering there we go so that's what I was looking for uh, let's say done and now that that button is going to link to another page on our website now, of course, you could use a URL for that as well, but it's usually just generally better to link to other pages. That way, if you ever change the URL, it's not going to create a broken button there. Uh, we can customize the design. Like I said before, guys, we can... Well, hold on, let's move this over to the right so you can see. Uh, so we can customize the design. We can change, like, the fill of it, uh, the borders, the corners, all kinds of stuff. So if the corners... This is, like, currently a rectangle. If we want to add, like, a 10-pixel radius, uh, you'll see that kind of rounded on the edges there. You can change the borders so it's kind of a little wider, a little more uh, buffer on the inside. We can add shadows to this if we want. I'm not going to do that right now. We can also change the layout uh, to choose where the icon is and where the text is aligned. And then lastly, you can change the color as well. So uh, the, the preset design honestly looks pretty decent, uh, but you get the idea of how we would be editing that right there. So that's the top. That's what I was looking for right there. A button, a title, uh, and then we have the our story. Then we have a nice little start your day thing. Uh, not enough call to action on this website yet, but regardless, I think you're getting the idea. The whole purpose is just to show you how I would go about editing one of these websites with Wix. Uh, so zoom out, reorder, see what it looks like in the big picture. It looks like we have too much white next to each other. Like, uh, kind of got to separate that up, break it up a little bit. There we go. So we have uh, like uh, the video and then a nice white background. And then we have another image and then another white background. That's definitely looking a lot better. So uh, from this right here, you can see that we can scroll down and we can keep editing this and really fleshing this out and adding more content. Uh, but you really, I think you're getting the idea of how we would add and do different things. Now, just to show you some of the other cool stuff you can add here. I know I went down these a little bit before, uh, but you could add some cool little interactive stuff. You can add contact things, uh, lists and grids. I think really what I want to get into right now uh, is probably actually going to be um, adding an anchor. So to add an anchor, you want to go to menu, go to anchors, and you want to look for this one right here. There's really only one option because it's not like something that anybody's going to see. So you click and drag it. It's just going to kind of be a horizontal line somewhere on your page. Uh, and so essentially what this is going to do is when somebody clicks on a button and it links to this anchor, it'll scroll down uh, so that that anchor as the top, is the top of the page. So if we want to uh, essentially link to get somebody to scroll down to this section right here that says uh, the beans, say we're talking about like coffee beans or whatever, uh, they're not talking about coffee beans here, it's chocolate. But we can we can just change that and make it coffee beans. But that right there, we can change that link and call it, uh, we can change it to the beans. You want to name your anchor something that makes sense so that you can link to it later. So it's not just anchor one, anchor two. Uh, and then it'll scroll down to right here. It says the beans. And, and like I said, we can actually change this to uh, quality coffee beans. Coffee beans. There we go. So it, it's relevant to what we're doing. Coffee beans. There we go. Okay, so uh, then that is going to, that now the anchor is live. Now, if we want to make like a button link to that or like this text, I talked about this earlier. We can edit this text, really any text on the entire page, add a link to the text, and we can link it to an anchor. Now, we only have, I think, two anchors at the time. We have the beans, which I just made, and we have contact. So if I say done, this will be linking to the beans, which means if somebody clicks on that link, if somebody's on this part of the page, uh, and I'll show you this in preview, uh, if somebody goes down and clicks on this, it'll scroll them all the way down automatically. 
to this section right here. It's a great way to uh, kind of conserve information on the top if you're trying to just make things more clickable uh, and not make it too noisy, but maybe have some other things that people are interested in. Using anchors to get them to scroll down to the bottom is a really great way to do things. And uh, that actually brings us to the next thing. So when we go and save the changes, you'll notice that it is actually releasing it to uh, just like a weird domain, tutorials91.wixsite.com slash Santrell coffee like that that's not what we want so let's actually talk about upgrading right now there are a couple plans you can choose from with the wix site and so if you're going to actually use your website for anything real more anything more than even just like a high school project honestly uh, you're going to want to consider upgrading a plan so they have the business and e-commerce ones and there's also the other tab for website plans obviously they're both going to do quite a bit of stuff and and, and they show you a lot of what the differences are but I think for this video, if you're just making a website for your own little small business, you're not selling anything. I mean, this is going to be great if you want to have a lot more storage and ad vouchers uh, and, and like stuff like that. But like the basic website plans are, are really fine for most websites that are not selling something. And they're just looking for kind of a, a little billboard on the Internet to just let the Internet know like where they are, what their menu is uh, and stuff like that. Or, you know, what, if you're not a business and you're just making this for a wedding or a, a personal portfolio, like the basic, the combo or the unlimited really should be fine for a lot of people. Now, I mean, I, I would recommend reading through this. A lot of times like getting the extra storage space is a really big benefit. Three gigabytes can be pretty limiting uh, and the ad vouchers can be nice if you're trying to really uh, run ads for your website. You don't have to obviously, but I generally recommend just getting the unlimited one. That extra space does make a difference. And then when you're trying to choose between uh, your billing cycle, Obviously, it shows you the longer that you're billing, uh, the more money you're saving. So I find that definitely don't go monthly unless you're only keeping this website for like one or two months uh, because it's so much cheaper to go yearly and even cheaper to go uh, bi-yearly or every two years. So generally, I think two years is probably the sweet spot. Three years is a pretty big commitment, but if you can afford it, I recommend going two years, uh, but at the very least, I recommend going yearly. Now, I'm gonna go with, with monthly right now. It doesn't come with a free domain. Uh, it doesn't do anything like that, but I'm just doing monthly because this is not a real website and this is just for a tutorial. So, you know, to avoid wasting hundreds of dollars, I'm just gonna do this really quickly. So uh, once you type in your credit card information and hit Hit next it'll bring you to this page and say that now you're ready to get a domain if you already have a domain you can click connect it on the bottom i'm just going to type in central coffee shop dot com dot com and say search it says that it is available and you can get it now the thing is you can actually get your domain through wix uh, which is generally a lot easier and a lot quicker or you could use a third party one like I mentioned before. Sometimes these are cheaper, sometimes you have better load speeds, uh, but in general, it's going to be a lot more work. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna do it directly through Wix. Like I said, it's just a lot easier uh, and I'm going to get this one for, uh, I guess, two years or it really doesn't matter. It's gonna, it's gonna, re, you know, it's gonna reload this all the time anyway. Um, and the other thing is that it is going to actually offer you on the next page, it's going to offer and say, ask if you want to have like website privacy. And this is something that uh, I do recommend like getting your website privacy because it just makes that it makes your address and it makes your, uh, your phone number and your name and everything. It makes it a little bit more private uh, so that people can't just go and find your home address and show up. If your website gets big, that's something you definitely want to consider. So private registration, something I recommend, we're just going to say, okay, and then go and complete, submit this purchase. And like I said, it makes it, it is really easy to do. I mean, I say easy, if this seems complicated, I, I promise if, if you've seen what you have to do uh, with like some WordPress stuff, if you're trying to use a different domain hosting, like things can get a lot more complicated. It, it, it's pretty streamlined here. And it's something that it's one of the reasons that, you know, things like Wix are just so easy to use. So then once we have our purchase completed, it'll bring you to this page here and it's gonna recommend you get a personalized mailbox. I recommend getting this so it's not, well, actually let's publish first. We're, we're gonna get the mailbox later on. I do recommend getting one uh, just so it's not like Mike5769 at gmail.com. Instead it's going to be uh, like actual like Mike at Santrell Media or SantrellCoffeeShop.com. So once you're done, you can go and publish your website, go to preview it. We're obviously not done with this website, but I'm just saying now that we have the domain, uh, you can go and head over and view your. And I should note that sometimes, like right here, it says Safari, you can't find the server. Sometimes uh, it does take a few minutes until that's actually going to be, you're able, going to be able to find that. Uh, so whenever you click view site, uh, it's going to do this. You might have to 
to go and like uh, open up a new browser or just close this and try again. Uh, but eventually your website, usually within a couple minutes, it will actually be live. Uh, I just want to publish that, go back, view site, and eventually the site will definitely be live. So heading back here, there are some other things I want to talk about. So on the left, you see it says add apps. I think that's really the next thing I want to talk about uh, because there really is a lot of functionality you can access, not just from, as you see here, it looks really good with just text and images and buttons. Uh, but if you want to add some other things, like obviously you can add forms, you can embed code, you can go to like your content manager, add store bookings, membership stuff, uh, and even your own custom designs on the bottom. Uh, but really it starts to get more powerful when you head down to the next thing, which is adding different apps. So if we want to do this, I don't think I really want to do this on this page, uh, or actually, sorry, quick side note here, uh, we want to change the header. The header is something that I want to touch on before I get into the apps. Uh, so the header, if you click on it, you can go to edit the header design, uh, and you can change the color of it, you can make it totally transparent, you can make it semi-transparent like this is right now, and you can change some basic stuff about that. Now, I don't like how the home button is hanging over the left side. I'm not especially fond of this header in general overall, uh, but what you could do is actually click on that. Uh, and what we really, hold on, it's not working right now because right now it is locked. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we go and unlock that. So unpin this element, you see that unpin the element. Um, and once you unpin it, you can move it wherever you want. Uh, so there we go. So I think I want it like right there. That, that way it's visible on every screen. Uh, it's never cut off and it's always going to be uh, in, a, in a decent location as well. Uh, so that's pretty much how you'd be editing the header. Now this is going to be the menu. You can't actually change like what is uh, what's said there other than if you go to actually the page uh, tree that I showed you earlier on. But as far as like layouts and design, you can change some basic stuff. Now over here, the social bar, you can change the social icons up there uh, right here. So if you go to settings, you can click and you can rearrange them first of all, or you can click on the little eyeball thing and hide them or unhide them. So I'm going to hide Foursquare. Uh, I definitely wanna have Instagram. So if we click on set your links, it kind of opens up a bit of a, a settings thing in your dashboard. You can access this in a couple different ways, uh, but we wanna go down and connect my Instagram. So connecting Instagram is really easy to do. All you have to do is type in HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, Instagram, Instagram.com, Instagram.com, uh, and then you just wanna say slash, and then this is just your Instagram handle, your username, uh, or what, you know, your Instagram right there is how it's going to redirect. So uh, you wanna do that, and then we just wanna click the X, and now that one's gonna be linked up. Now, because we have Twitter and Facebook up there, I'm just gonna hide those. We really don't want those. So I'll have my Instagram on the top of this website now, and it's ready to go. If somebody clicks on that, they'll be redirected to my Instagram, uh, all ready to go, and they can see my whole page from their phone on the app or on the web browser. Uh, it'll just make them sign in. Now, other than that, uh, like I said, there's really not a whole lot of other stuff here. The footer, you can change. Uh, it's gonna be really similar to editing the header. You probably wanna get rid of this. Now, we don't need the Wix branding on the bottom, uh, so we can just go click on that, click delete. If you don't have a paid plan, you won't be able to get rid of all the Wix branding, uh, but obviously getting rid of that with the paid plan is, is not a problem at all. So what you can do is you can go and add things to the bottom, so maybe like the text, and you'll see that we have now a heading six, just a little title on the bottom there. And so you can add like your phone number, your address, like really whatever you want. You can add some dynamic elements too, but uh, I mean, this is gonna be probably the best. Just adding text is, is really simple to do. And so now, like I said, let's head over and talk about some of the apps. It's pretty much everything I wanna talk about with the homepage here. Obviously the next step is just to flesh it out and add more content here, more uh, text and images and stuff like that. Now, if we want to add apps, let's just do this on a different page so we don't clog up the homepage too much. We could do it like online ordering actually already is probably an app. I, I didn't look at that page yet, but I imagine uh, they have an app set up there. But if we go to About Us, this is where we can just add one. So the Wix app market has tons and tons of apps. A lot of them are, are you don't have to pay for them. Uh, there are some that you do have to, but you have like MailChimp right there, QuickBooks, uh, like a lot of other kind of backend things that are really useful. But there's also some front end stuff you can actually put on your site as well. So you can collect leads, you can analyze your traffic, you can go to like marketing, um, you can go down to media and content. So like Wix video, Wix music, uh, it would be a great way to have a, like a video player on there. A lot of them are made by Wix as well. Uh, and so they do have reviews. They're, they're, they're honestly pretty robust. They're obviously not perfect. Um, but if we go to like Wix music, for example, you'll see that this right here is going to show up on the screen. It kind of looks a little bit like a, a music player, like on your phone. 
and kind of how that would look. Now there is like a set aspect ratio it's going to follow. So as I resize this, you'll see that the whole thing kind of changes. It's going to be like a long skinny strip, uh, which means it doesn't really work that well in the middle. Like it looks okay. It looks kind of weird. I'd rather move it over to like the left or the right. Uh, but this is a great way to kind of showcase your, your music or whatever podcast, whatever you have. Uh, and you can have people have, you can have the option to buy it from you. Uh, so people can go and add, or you can add your own like album, your EP, your single, your playlist, whatever you're doing. You can add that here. You can set a price and then people can go and like listen to it on here. And if they want to download it, they can go and actually purchase it from you. So really easy to do. And honestly, like a very, uh, a really solid thing to add to your website, especially if you're a musician or, or some kind of artist, um, it would be great to sell some kind of files or like that. So MP3 files, FLAC, lossless, whatever you're doing, um, you can do that right there. So I think that's a really cool thing. But of course, there are tons and tons of different apps if you want to add them. Uh, but then below that, we also have media. So this right here, very different from apps. This is just going to be what I showed you in the beginning, how it is a lot easier if you upload all of your media to one spot. Uh, so this could be like PDFs, files, whatever, uh, pictures, and you can just click and drag them onto your screen and that'll just easily add them right there. So we're going to delete that one. We don't actually want that there. And then the last thing on this left side is actually the Ascend tools, which are kind of like a marketing thing that Wix runs. So uh, you can have email marketing. Uh, so you can have, it can send email campaigns. You have SEO tools, you have social posts. So I showed that it integrates with MailChimp, but you could also use the native email marketing within Wix. Uh, it's going to be integrated a little bit better, uh, but it, you know, and it works pretty well also. Now you might have to pay for an extra plan for that, depending on what you're trying to do. And now the next thing I want to talk about is actually search engine optimization. So speaking of marketing, SEO is another great way, probably one of the best ways to get yourself found on the internet. And the best thing is it's actually free to do. And Wix has some really great tools for this. So if we go over to uh, maybe like a different page, we want to go, or we could honestly use the about us page, or you want to do this for pretty much every page there is. But uh, if you go to, yeah, so like the menu page, for example, you want the menu to be found on Google. This is what it looks like right now. We can go to settings and we can go down to get found on Google. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's doing exactly what you, you think you would do, uh, but it's going to take us over to the SEO is back on the dashboard, which is good because I already showed you a lot about how to make your website on the Wix, uh, just the developer in general, but there's a lot more stuff on the back end that a lot of people tend to forget about. So you can't just make your website look good. You want to make sure that not only does it look good, but you also go to the dashboard and set up your marketing, look at your analytics and do everything on the back end there. So now that it finally loaded, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. We just click on start now and it's going to ask us a couple of questions. The first thing is what is the site name? And you see right here by default, it's just using the little URL we added. So Santrell Coffee Shop. Uh, we want this to be three separate words. Uh, so make that there as it is. Uh, we can have a local, uh, we can have a location or not. And I mean, in general, adding a location is going to be better. Let's just say like North Philly, uh, whatever. Sure. Maybe we're in that location. Uh, and then how would you describe your business? So we want to have like three to five words or something like that. And so we're going to say we make coffee, that's going to be our little tagline right there. And so then we have to create it's creating our SEO plan for us, which is, is like, that's what they're called the, the the Wix, the SEO Wiz is what it's calling it. And it gives you like a nice checklist, it makes it really easy to go down here and see what's working on your website, what's missing on your website. And it walks you through how to do everything. So it says right here, uh, like you don't have an SEO description on the homepage. And you can go and it just guides you and, and tells you exactly where to go for that even as a button. So you can just head right over there and optimize anything you need to. So search engine optimization, definitely don't overlook this so easy to do completely free that it shows you how to do everything right here. Uh, so if you're not doing this, you're just missing out on a lot of traffic through search engines, probably specifically Google. Uh, but other than that on the dashboard, if we go to my sites, um, so I mean, like I said, the editor is great, you can do a lot of stuff from the editor. And from settings, you can get to a lot of the stuff as well. But if you go to my sites from your dashboard, uh, you could just click on the website that we're working on right now, Santral Coffee Shop. Uh, but of course, you could have other websites as well. And you could just switch between them from uh, the dashboard there. But the dashboard for this specific website, you have a lot of options on the left side. So in the middle here, we have uh, just some stuff that's going to be like your domain, uh, your website plan, those are both upgraded. If you want to get uh, an email, it's usually through I believe G Suite, uh, you can set that up right here. I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, but it's really easy to do as well. And it's going to give you that email that I talked about before. So you could be Mike at Santral Coffee Shop.com. 
Then we have the Ascend plan. Right now we're on the uh, on the, the free one, uh, but you could upgrade that as well. Uh, and that'd be a great way to access some of the more advanced marketing tools, the email marketing, a lot of that stuff. But other than that, in the middle, uh, there's not a whole lot of really exciting stuff here. There's going to be a couple things that are different from website to website, uh, some things that kind of a checklist, other things you should do. But looking on the left side, we have some of the apps we, ha we, we had. So the restaurant one is going to be relevant to this one. Uh, the music library, because I added that app, is going to show up there. Uh, but th those might not show up for everybody, depending on the template and the website you're using. Ascend by Wix is going to be down here for everybody. Uh, so like the SEO tools, that's how you would access them by going to marketing and SEO. Click on get found on Google. That, that'll bring you right over to the SEO whiz. We also have email marketing, like I said. And email marketing is cool. So it allows you to, as I mentioned before, it's a great way to send out uh, notifications about sales you might have, uh, or maybe some collections that you have, like a fall collection or something. And it's a great way to kind of capitalize on any email list you have uh, and regain a lot more traffic to your website. You can also go to analytics and see like a traffic overview, sales overview, uh, reports. Right now, there's nothing here because we don't have, I mean, obviously no traffic yet. It's a brand new website. Uh, but regardless, there's a lot of stuff over here. And other than those things, uh, settings is really the next thing that we really want to, that we really care about. So if you go into, uh, I mean, uh, if we go into settings here, we can go to like some general website settings, some business info, uh, some, some language and region, uh, or we can go into roles and permissions. Roles and permissions is great if you have more than one person working on your site. You can create another user and they can help you edit that website as well uh, without needing your passwords. You can limit their permissions if you want. Here in business info, this is something else that I really wanted to show you guys. You want to make sure that you're adding as much information here as possible, uh, just so that, you know, if you're using this anywhere in your website, uh, it, it does make sense and people can find where your business is. You don't have any conflicting locations. You, Google knows where you are as well. And now other than that, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of other stuff I want to talk about. This is all going to be stuff that you kind of want to dig through on your own, go through all the different settings uh, and make sure that your website is just optimized fully, like fleshed out. You have all the right everything in there. Now, if we go back to dashboard, we can just go right back to editing our site. I think that's just about everything I wanted to show you guys in this video. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely good luck on your website. I wish you the best. I hope that it's, this video helped you. Um, and if you have any questions, definitely leave your comments down below. I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. Uh, but guys, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider liking it, leave a comment down below, and share it with anyone else who might be interested. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.